Let's look at, again, how this came down. A, someone who is not exactly um, a supporter of the President's agenda, who a couple days after this first conversation took place refused to uphold a lawful order of the President's, um, who is not exactly someone that, that was excited about President Trump uh, taking office or his, or his agenda. She had been, hold on, Caitlin, Caitlin hold on, no, Caitlin, let me answer the question. She had come here, given a heads up, told us there were materials, and at the same time, we did what we should do. Just because someone comes in and gives you a heads up about something and says, uh, I want to share some information, it doesn't mean that you immediately jump the gun and go take an action. I think if you flip this scenario and say, what if we had just dismissed somebody because a political opponent of the President had made an utterance, you would argue that it was pretty uh, irrational to act in that manner. We did what we were supposed to do. The President made ultimately the right decision, um, and I think he was proven that, that uh, How that is she a political opponent of the president? She was, I, she was I, the I, acting I, attorney general that he the, Appointed on. by the Obama administration and a strong, opponent, a strong supporter of, the, of Clinton. You said that uh, Sally Yates was a strong supporter of Hillary Clinton. What is that based on? I, I think she's made some, you know, I think she, she was widely rumored to play a large role in the Justice Department if Hillary Clinton had won. One. Um, so on a, on a different topic, I have a question about that fired usher, Angela Reid. Mm -hmm. uh, it was reported that she received a generous severance package. I'm wondering how do you give a substantial severance package to a government employee? I don't know. I'd be glad to get back to you on that. Sure. Anita. Um, yesterday we learned that Rosalie Yates had said that she learned of the first immigration order, the travel ban, by reading the newspaper. And I'm wondering why the acting attorney general wasn't privy to that. Was that because she was a Clinton, Obama, Obama appointee, Clinton supporter, why was the acting attorney general not notified? And she had just met that same day that it was signed with Don McKinnon. And so he could have mentioned it as well. I, I, don't, I don't know why she wasn't. Uh, again, I think if we want to relitigate the first executive order at the time, we talked about all of the proper individuals that needed to be made aware of were made aware of at the time. Is it not unusual that the I, I don't. General I, again, I think it, I also, just to be clear, again, remember, this is someone who ultimately didn't even want to enforce it. Uh, so to prove, I mean, to, to suggest that somehow. Well, she wanted to enforce it until she knew I, I understand that, but I think ultimately we were proved right about who needed to be in the loop on that because she ultimately chose to disregard the president's lawful order. It was on purpose, though, is what No, I didn't say that. Please don't. I, I did not say that. What I'm saying is that we discussed at the time of the executive order being signed back in January uh, the process by which that was followed. The appropriate people then were were in the loop. You said it was widely rumored that she wanted to be a part of the Clinton White House potentially, a and so that makes you negate her coming to. No, the I'm not. I, again, that, no, no. I, I guess my point is that somebody who is not, who clearly showed by the fact that career DOJ attorneys told her that the president's lawful order. Uh, that, to, to, that she should sign the president's lawful order and then chose not to do it was clear. I, I get it, but that, that vindicates the president's point, that this was not somebody who was looking out. I, 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 I think my point is, is that we were correct in the assumptions that we made at the time. 